important for me to be here. Uh, this very moving uh, special tribute and simply stand here at the Pentagon and send this beautiful love letter to our troops, our boys and girls out there. I just can't tell you how, how wonderful and how thrilled I am. I want to welcome all of you to the Pentagon and certainly want to welcome this distinguished musical group, men and women who devote their lives to the service of the men and women who have served us in uniform are here today to offer you a, a very special musical treat and a way to send a love letter to our troops scattered all over the world. And the theme today is for the love of America. You heard it. For the love of America. The city of St. Paul, Minnesota is named after St. Paul of Tarsus, a man whose writings and letters have had a profound effect on Western civilization. One of St. Paul's oft-quoted admonitions is about, yes, about love. Says he, and now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. <laughs> Begin to tell the story of how great a love can be, a sweet love story that is older than the sea. Where do I start? How long does it last? Can love be measured by the hours in a day? I have no answers now, but this much I can see. I know I'll need you till the stars all burn away, and you will be there. These heartwarming lines we just heard are from the song Love Story, made famous by a movie, now classic by the same name. And there is no doubt that the world's greatest songs, poems, essays, books, movies, novels, stage drama, music compositions, operas, and even more wars were all written about this magic and many splendid word, love. Today, however, we give you a different love story, a story where the time is always now, the place is always here, and the day remains always morning where golden sunshine bays the amber waves of grain, and where purple mountains' majesties hover over the fruited plains, and where good is crowned with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. This story begins with the stern and passion stress of defeat, not of the booted legions of an imperial army, but rather of a throng of poor but beautiful pilgrims. Pilgrims impoverished and fragile in every way except in their faith. Pilgrims who beat a thoroughfare of freedom across the wilderness and forever cloned the DNA of a proud new nation. <laughs> Long, long ago, the human race embarked on a long sojourn through the millennia, a perpetual quest for freedom across the eons, through kingdoms, thrones, and chiefdoms, dynasties, and empires. The human spirit continuously kept sailing through, and eventually, in the fullness of the ages, the good ship humankind landed ashore there near Cape Cod, and specifically on Plymouth Rock, on a continent hidden by the fog of the ocean for thousands of years. And a few score years later, on a warm midsummer afternoon in July 1976, in the hills near Philadelphia, Liberty Bell rang loud and clear, and the eternal gates of space and time flung wide open on their four dimensional hinges as the greatest and happiest wedding in all of human drama was ushered in. And all the colonies came. And it was evening, and it was morning, and it was America. The foundations of this new nation were great because they drew upon enduring and timeless precepts that are the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Values that exalt a nation, a unique blend and balance of freedom and responsibility, of inalienable rights and eternal restraints, of repentance and redemption, of mercy and justice, of grace and truth. Of living, talking, and walking in the sunlight, and thus, in turn, becoming a light, a light to the nations. And the song was heard everywhere, over here and over there. Whenever the Yanks were coming, freedom's light was burning bright. <laughs> undeniable bumps in the road, and America had to be constantly reminded to remain faithful to its founding ideals, the noble spiritual values that made her great in the first place. Americans, friends, countrymen, we must always give great care to keep hold of two basic loves in our lives, 
vertically, our love to the Creator, from whom all blessings flow, and horizontally, our love to our neighbors, treating them the way we want to be treated. We must not forget that these two loves, great love to the Creator and to our neighbors, will keep America strong against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And so today, we lift our voices together in one accord, in a song that echoes the harmonies of liberty, of unity despite diversity, of e pluribus unum. On a probability scale of zero to ten, zero meaning zero probability, ten meaning metaphysical certitude, how probable is it that the love for America that unites us will win over any division that may separate us? The answer is a ten. It's metaphysically certain that the love for America that unites us will triumph over any divisions, big or small. In defense of America, many courageous patriots gave life and limb for the love of our country. We honor those heroes today, each and every one of them. To them we say with gratitude, your love for America is alive in our hearts and in our minds. As long as life endures, we shall never, ever forget you. ages that is upon us today, ask not what America can do for you, ask what you can do for America. I'm proud to be an American, and I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. For there is no doubt, I love this land. God bless the USA. <laughs> America, but also for the love of freedom, that we wage this international war on terror, a war that is fought in many arenas and fronts, particularly so in the marketplace of ideas, where our goal is to win the hearts and minds of those who are now shackled in bondage to fear, hatred, and death. So, without hesitation, doubt, or complaint, we shall endure the night of the battle, knowing that like the prince in Puccini's opera, Tarandot, in the morning, Al Alba, we will be victorious. Vincero. Al Alba Vincero, we shall prevail. Liberty will prevail. <laughs> Americans, as we face America's enemies, foreign or domestic, in this perennial battle between freedom and tyranny, and in this most recent chapter of that battle, which is our war on terror, where we face an enemy that lurks in stealth and creeps in darkness. Let me ask you a question, borrowing Patrick Henry's immortal words, why stand we here idle? What is it that gentle men and gentle women wish? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty, or give me death.
brave young men and women sacrificing in Iraq, Afghanistan, and for that, on the cliffs of Normandy and across Europe. The words of the Battle Hymn of the Republic take a new meaning. Let us die to make men free. Yes, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lies down his life for his friends. And so, in the name of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's words, how do I love thee, America? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and the breadth and height my soul can reach. When feeling out of sight, I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall love thee better after death. So, with humility of spirit, courage of the heart, and confidence in mission, America, go forth. Victorious in your quest, may it be crowned with peace. With love and joy, your homes be blessed, and laughter never cease. America, the love of our hearts. America, the shining city on a hill. America, daring as an eagle. Fresh as the dawn, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, and fearsome as a mighty army. In the beauty of the living, Christ was born across the sea, with the glory in his bosom, that transfigures you. take a moment to also recognize and pay homage to our military families who bear so much of the sacrifice. And so, in heartfelt gratitude, I request that our gold star mothers and wives, our American war mothers, and the men whose wives are off in the war zones, please stand up, all military families, and be recognized. I think the only thing we could follow that possibly is God bless America. I think we'll all hold hands and sing us from our hearts because this is for everybody out there who's getting the job done. And we send this special salute to you. So join us wherever you are. <laughs> Your turn, all you people out there that are watching this all around the globe. All right, so what we're going to do, active military reservists or veterans, it is this point of the program where we play the Armed Forces Meddling. Now, when your service song is played, feel free to sing along, stand up, wave your hands, or stop your feet. <laughs> do something about it, okay? And yeah. if you're out, one of the folks out there, one of our heroes who is uh, confirmed to be in a hospital bed or in a wheelchair or you know, leaning on some kind of prosthesis, just lift up your spirit with your own song and keep your chin up, okay? We're rooting for you. That's right. Hang in there. And hang in there, all of you who are out on the front lines in Iraq or Afghanistan or on board ships in the middle of the ocean. We're now going to call the roll of the United States services. Stand up and... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
The United States Marine Corps. Send a message of support to the troops. Visit www.pentagonconcert.org. Funding for this program was provided by Military Order of the Purple Heart, Pfizer Incorporated, Non-Commissioned Officers Association of the United States, Disabled American Veteran, FedEx, Air Force Association, Association of Military Surgeons of the United States, Blinded American Veterans Foundation, Blinded Veterans Association, Paralyzed Veterans of America, Veterans of Foreign Wars, and many, many members and patrons of VA.